This is Pete Winters, and last week on our fishing reports, I talked about doing some different segments on the Lawrence Electronics, just some things that I've learned over the years. Uh, hopefully, they'll help you out as far as setting up your graphs, uh, just some basic settings. And I'm going to do the sonar first, then we'll get into uh, the GPS, and then some of the structure and down scan. Uh, but everything is pretty much the same, you know, the 8s and the 10s have all got the soft keys on the bottom and you'll set your HDS 5 and 7s up the same way. What I like to do is go in and hit menu twice, come over to sonar, and down here on the very bottom, it'll be insulation. What you want to do is come down to insulation, just hit enter, and what this is, is it tells you what kind of transducer you have. Well, it doesn't tell you what it has, you have to tell the unit. See the little blue? I'm going to scroll down till I get to the transducer. And I've already got my transducer number uh, entered in there. But if there's not a transducer entered in there, it'll come blank. You'll hit enter and it'll give you different options for the transducers that Lawrence has. And if you look on the back of your transducer cable, there's a silver tag, and it'll have the, the number on it. So what you want to do is just pick yours out, hit enter, save it, and you're done. Now, another thing I'll do is uh, on the frequency. You want to run it on 200 frequency. I run my ping speed up at max, and I want the auto sensitivity on. Now, some deals I'll get into where I'll actually turn the auto sensitivity off and manually do it. But Lawrence has, has really got the auto sensitivity pretty well figured, dialed in to where it's automatically adjusting for most all the situations that you'll, you'll come into on the lake. But ping speed max, uh, 200 frequency, and I leave the range on automatic 90% of the time. Now I'll get into that later on when uh, the 10% of the time that I don't. But I hit menu again and come over here. Another thing that's real important, it's on the same page over here where the insulation was. Come down here to fishing mode, shallow water. Uh, if you hit enter, it's got general use, fresh water, deep water. It's got several different things to choose from, but shallow water is what you want to set your unit on. So you pick out shallow water, just hit enter. As far as the noise rejection, the surface clarity, uh, that I just leave it on normal, on automatic, and it, it basically takes care of itself. Now, another thing I always do is uh, come down here to sonar options, is the fish ID. I don't want that thing beeping every time it goes over a fish, and the fish IDs, uh, the fish ID and the fish ID beeps we usually shut off. Because if you're around brush or trees, a lot of times the unit has a hard time distinguishing whether it's brush or trees, and it's showing you little, pretty little pictures of fish, which is fine, but we find that if we set the units, we shut that off, we get a, a clearer, better picture on the unit. Okay, now when you're on sonar on the 8 and 10s, all your buttons on the bottom will operate your sonar. You know, you can split your screens, you got your frequency, you know, which is either 83 or 200. We find 200 works the best. My range is on auto. The color is on auto. Now, if you notice over here on the left, it says I'm on auto sensitivity, but it's uh, minus 6%. Every time you get into different water, as far as the, there's different particles in the water, sometimes you might pick up a little interference on your screen. So all you've got to do is hit the auto sense, you know, hit the sensitivity button once, then you can come up here to your flywheel. If you move it to your right, uh, you'll count down to zero, and you can even get up to, to positive. The other way you go negative. And usually how I set that is whenever I'm picking up uh, a little bit of clutter like this here, I'll back the sensitivity off just a little bit until that clears up. And then once you get it where you want it, you just hit enter. Now you may fish a spot, run down the lake five or six miles, and uh, you'll start picking up a little bit of interference. So you just hit that sensitivity button, tweak it out a little bit. Most of the time, the unit, the automatic, you know, being in automatic, it pretty much compensates for that. 
Now, if you're running two graphs like most of us are, when you're up there fishing on the front graph, you don't want the sonar on here because uh, if you're running off two different transducers like I am, this transducer is on the back, the one up on the front is on the trolling motor, the frequencies, the transducers will interfere with each other. So an easy way to shut the sonar off is, is right there. Just hit stop sonar and it stops the unit. Another way to do that is uh, now uh, turn, hit that again, the unit goes back to working. Another way to do that too, we're also with two big units, you're all, always pulling a lot of battery power with the lights on and the, the GPS running and the sonar. So what you can do is just hit the power button once and it'll automatically come up to standby. Hit the enter button. Now the unit will go on standby. And about every, oh, I think it does it once every minute or maybe twice, it'll actually flash standby. I do this in the morning, like there it went there. When I'm getting ready to take off, uh, if I don't want the bright light on. But what's good about this, when you get down from fishing, just hit the power button, hit exit. It's not like you're shutting the whole unit down where you got to wait for it to, to reload. Okay, now, you know on your pages, you pick out what uh, what chart selection you want. And usually what I like to run on is I go to chart and sonar and I run a split screen 90% of the time. Well, when you're scrolling up here, if you look on the left hand side, that's the picture the option that it, that'll be given you. That'll be my structure scan. This would be radar and chart. So basically where it says I'm on the chart page, the chart is going to be on one side all the time and I've got these different other different options here. Now 90% of the time I run it right there which is on uh, my split screen. I've got chart on one side and sonar on the other. Now you can set up your your speed, your time of day, your water temperature, however you want it on the screen. Now I'll go back to just sonar. Now the way you do that is you just hit your pages and then hit menu once. And it'll be either adjust your panel sizes, edit, or you can add. If you you just come down to edit, hit enter. Now here down here if you want to add something or change it uh, and you can even change the size like right here where it's highlighted in blue okay if I want to that's the one that I could change right now so I would hit size if I didn't want my uh, then it would give me three different options my small medium and large so you just scroll down to it and hit enter and it's going to make it uh, Larger. The only problem is not showing it because I'm sitting here in the shop. Yeah, see how it came larger. Okay. Now, what I want to do, I want to put that back to medium. Then I'll just hit enter. Now, if you wanted to move that, if I wanted to put that, okay, hit enter. If I want to put this on this side of the screen, you just take the flywheel, move it over or move it down. Pretty much get it where you want it. And then hit enter. Okay, now you can take the flywheel and scroll it down. If I want to change the size of my water temperature or move it to a different part of my screen, that's how you change all that. And like I say, all your soft keys on the bottom will uh, enter all that for you. So we'll exit out of there. Then it'll ask you if you want to save your changes. So I want to save them. So what we'll try to get into next week is some stuff on the on the charts. Then we're going to do some structure scan, some down scan, and hopefully do some shots on the water where you can actually see us vertical fishing for fish. Now one thing I didn't go over was the range. You know, I said 90% of the time I leave the range on auto. But if I'm, a lot of times you'll hear me talking about I'm fishing in 60, 70, 80 foot of water. Now what I will do in that case, I'll go in and hit the range, and right now my fish aren't much deeper than 30, 35. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down here to 40 foot, and I'm going to hit enter, and what that's going to do, it's going to keep the, I did something wrong there, see so hit auto, 
I'm down to 40 feet. Hit enter. Okay, now I'm on a 40 foot range. So it's only going to show me from 0 to 40. Over on the top left, if it's 100 foot, it's going to show me my total depth, but it's going to take all the power of the unit and only show from 40 foot to the surface. This way I can see my bait better, I can see the fish better, and I can still see the tops of the trees as long as they're you know, no further down than, than 40 foot. If I feel some of the fish are coming out of the trees in 50 or 60 foot, then I'll just hit the range and go down to 60 and hit enter. But basically what this does, it enables you to see your bait better, enables you to see the fish better coming in and out of the, the trees. So then when you're done, when you want to put it back to auto, you just scroll up to auto and hit enter. So till next week, uh, we'll get into the chart next week and, we'll, and we'll get, then we'll do the structure and the down scan and hopefully some on the water shot. So uh, we'll see you next week.